Hello and welcome. My name is Sarah Keith, and I've titled today's message, Waiting on God. Do you have what it takes? Based on Luke chapter 24. After Jesus rose from the dead, he appeared to his disciples. But rather than being happy to see him, even though he told them he would rise from the dead, he startled and frightened them. They thought they saw a spirit, that is, until he began to talk and explain to them everything that had to be fulfilled in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Luke tells us that Jesus opened their minds to understand. He then told them to stay and wait to receive what the Father had promised, power from on high. He then blessed them and was carried up to heaven. Now, rather than being fearful, the disciples obeyed the Lord and waited joyfully. But what was their secret? I think verses 52 to 53 explain a truth for us. They worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. It sounds to me that not only did they wait joyfully, but they waited with great anticipation for God's next move. It isn't easy to wait on God. I tend to lose hope and think God has forgotten me. But wouldn't it be great to have that kind of joyful anticipation in our lives while we wait to hear from God? But how? What does it take? Like the disciples, we have the Word of God. And as God's children, we've been given the same power that was promised to them, God's Holy Spirit, to open our minds and give us understanding. In other words, we already have what it takes. We have what we need. So let us seek God's will in our lives and offer praise, worship, and honor with joy, knowing and anticipating that he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Romans 8.32 Let us also remember that as we wait and pray, the purpose of prayer is not to get our will done in heaven, but to get God's will done here on earth. Bless the Lord with me. Keep your eyes on Jesus.